questions? Thank you. Yeah, I think, you know, we set out to do a job today. We know West Ham are a good team and we knew it was going to be a difficult game, but we set out to do a job that we set out all season to do, you know, League, FA Cup, Continental Cup, and, you know, we're proud that we've added the FA Cup to the Conti Cup this season. I thought West Ham were excellent, but I expected them to be good. Um, I expected them to play on the counter-attack and I expected them to cause us problems. Um, with Lehman and with Leon, and I expected Kiernan to play, but um, I thought we were just a little bit emotional. We played the occasion. Maybe not played the occasion, but I thought the occasion affected our offensive play. I thought we got into good moments in and around the edge of the box and took shots on when they weren't shots and crossed the ball off the pitch. And It was a little bit unlike us. Um, and also we gave counter-attacks away by not being structured tactically the way that we are. So we had some little shifts to do and we asked them to just settle down and play logically and be controlled. And second half, I thought they, they looked comfortable in, in, in the way that we have won games this season and we went on and controlled the game. Yeah, I said, I said to those younger players when we signed them and, and have said along, and I said to Jess Parks two weeks ago, we have to expose these younger players to this occasion and to these occasions because we want them to reach the potential. Um, irrelevant of the result Lauren Hemp had to get on the pitch today, just like Georgia Stanway did in 2017. Um, of course, it helps when you're in control of the game, but you have to expose the players because we see those players as the next Nikita Paris, the next Jill Scott, the next Steph Orton. And it takes, you have to expose these players, otherwise they're never going to reach their potential. But I thought Kira Walsh was excellent, Ab McManus was excellent, um, Georgia Stanway is Georgia Stanway and just plays the way that she plays. Um, and then Hemp, when she came on, I mean, nearly got two goals. I thought half time, we, 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 I just, it's hard to get messages on the pitch and it's hard to affect the game in the, in the, while the ball is moving. Half-time gives you a time to settle everybody down. And I thought we allowed West Ham to too many counter-attacks. You see the chance from Jane Ross. You know, we gave the ball away. You look at all the other counter-attacks. It's when we're it's coming from our attack or our corner. So there were some real basic tactical things that I suppose an occasion like this can affect. Um, once we solved those and once we... I, I got my point across in the dressing room of how we play... And it was a little bit like Yeovil last week. We, we lacked that little identity of how we play. And when you do that, you allow teams to get into the game. Um, but second half, I thought they were excellent. Really professional, really controlled. And, um, you know, three goals and a clean sheet. We're really pleased with that. Huge. But so was the two saves she made in the Continental Cup semi-final when Chelsea were on top. So were all the penalty saves. I could go all the way back to Karen Bardsley making a save against Kelly Smith in my th fifth game against Arsenal, she's made huge saves and continues to make huge saves. And um, I think in these big games, myself and all of the England fans and all of the, we see the value of KB in that goal. You know, she's so big. She's, I think she quite thrives off it, making those big saves. And, and what I think is a good thing is we're all going to say Kira Walsh and Georgia Stanway and Lauren Hemp were excellent, but KB's probably impacted the game more than anybody by keeping it a nil-nil. I think people, I, I think you've hit the nail on the head. I think people will say, you know, we've scored goals, we've, you know, we play good football and we've got good young players. I think resilience has been our key. That we probably shouldn't have got a draw 2 2 out of the Bristol game, but we did. We probably shouldn't have gone in at half time against Chelsea 0 0. This team's ability to absorb pressure this season has probably been our best attribute. And I am completely comfortable and I have so much belief in them with the likes of Jen Beattie, Gemma Bonner, Abby McManus, Steph Walton, Karen Barzi, Kira Walsh. Just, that, they just absorb pressure. And, and maybe in 2014, 2015, we didn't have that. 2016, we weren't really put under pressure. 2017, 2018, you know, we didn't absorb the pressure well and it shows we didn't win a trophy. And then this year, we spoke about it. We changed a few things. And like I say, that's probably been my most pleasing thing that when we've been on the rack and we've been like today, conceding counter-attacks, giving chances away. Actually, we've stayed in the game, absorbed the pressure and been able to go and take the, take the win. Going back to what you said about the change after half-time, were you really saying it was more of a psychological approach to your half-time team, but rather a tactical approach? Was it kind of 
Yeah, I think she's trying to affect the player's mindset. I think that when you play at Wembley, it's an, it's it's, and I don't think this maybe is conscious. Sometimes I think it is an unconscious thing. I don't think Nikita Paris or Georgia Stanway just wanted a score for themselves. But I think when you come to this occasion, the opportunity to score at Wembley is so huge that you might it might impair your decision making. And as the coach, my job is to prepare the players and to affect the players technically, tactically, and, and to make sure that they go out with the best mindset to win. And these players here, they, you know, they have full trust in me. I have full trust and belief in them. And, you know, we had an honest conversation at half-time and they went out and won the game. So I'm so proud of them. Yeah, I'm so proud of them. I think our, I say, I say this a lot, our strategy is really evident. I think the strongest part of, of our football club is myself and Gavin Makel have a really clear strategy of how we work and we stick to that in good and bad times. And it's to, to have good young players, to develop good young players and to put responsibility and expectation on them to win along the way. And I think you, you, you create good players. And if we can be as British as possible, we will. You know, we have the likes of, you know, Janine Becky, Pauline Bremer, you know, um, Tessa Woolert, but you know, if there are young players out there, good young players, we'd like to play a part in developing them because it's our belief in how we're going to be successful. And today is just a good day where we can sit back and look at it and you know be proud of those players, and now move on and be proud of the, all of the players that go to the World Cup and hope for, that they can win, you know, the trophy just like we've won today. Uh, it's hard to say because I don't want to put expectation on her, but you see it. She's got so much talent. She's such an exciting player. She's technically good. She can score goals. She's got speed. She's got everything that I wouldn't want to play against. Um, but we've just got to make sure that we develop her in the right way because Bristol did an incredible job of getting her to the level where she is now. You know, Willie Kirk has developed Lauren Hemp to being able to play at a, a, a FA Cup final and score. We've had a year with her. We need a bit more time. You, look, you, know, you can see she's coming off the bench a lot. But, you know, next season she'll be a top player for us and she'll be somebody that plays in our team every week in, week out. Just like Georgia Stanway, you know, had those years where we blooded her in and out and now is, is a huge player for us. And Lauren Hemp will follow that path. I think it's a huge achievement for the football club, for the players, for the staff, because... Um, I'm a realist. I, I understand football and last year we didn't win anything and there are reasons for that. There's no point in being emotional about it. We had to be logical. We had to look at the off-season. We had to see why we thought physically we weren't great at the end of the season, why we thought the mindset of the group wasn't resilient enough and maybe didn't absorb pressure enough. And we changed a few things in the off-season. One or two members of staff, one or two things with the, with the operation. We brought some new players in and, you know, potentially we can go undefeated. The flip side of that is we should have won the league, you know, we feel Arsenal deserve the league, but we don't feel they were better than us. You know, we haven't lost the game. We should have won the game against Reading when we were 1-0 up. We should have won the game against Bristol when we were 1-0 up. We should have won the game against Chelsea when we were 2-0 up. We probably shouldn't have gave away the two mistakes that we gave away against Bristol at home. It was a set piece against Reading. Now, I can go through all of these things, but we have to look at the logical reasoning and go, how do we make sure we don't draw games next year whilst retaining all the good things that we had this year as football? Yeah, I think we always go in games to win games. Um, we we won't play with the, the the goal of being undefeated. We'll just do what we normally do. We'll play the game to win. And I'll I'll pick the team. We, we'll give the players tomorrow Monday off, back in on Tuesday, and we'll look how the team train. We'll we'll prepare the week and we'll put the best team on the pitch to win that game of football, just like we would any game. We won't be taking our foot off the gas. We won't be, you know, joining any kind of party. We'll just be playing to try and win. And if it means we go undefeated, we'll be proud of that achievement as well. I reflect on the Champions League as probably the um, probably the tail end of what happened last season. We hadn't got over that. We had we, we had we needed time, and we were you know, we come up against a very good Atletico Madrid team. But um, we were probably still in that sort of development phase of getting over 
the things we, we, we changed the working week or if I went into all the detail it was new then and the Champions League probably came a little bit too soon for us but we'll reflect on that um, we just reflect on draws you know we, we, we have to I, I listen I'm not a genius but I said in 2016 that the league would be won on head to heads I said in 20 this season the league would be won on the teams that dropped points in and around the head to heads and it's been proven that I thought we were you know against Chelsea against Arsenal we could go and win but we had to make sure that we were res we, that we were consistent enough across those games, and we haven't been consistent enough. You know, we should have won the game against Reading and Bristol and Chelsea after being wi in winning positions, but we didn't. But you know, that's football. We'll have to go back, look at it, reflect on it, see if there's any real reasons why maybe we didn't win those games, and then improve those things. You know, no one always wins. I think it's dangerous to make Champions League your top aspiration because there's so many difficult teams in it. And not only is there so many difficult teams in it, you see every year, because of the format of the Champions League, you, you, can't, you don't really know who you've got. You, you can get the best team, you can get the, the best unseeded team, and then it's a real tight game. I think you've just got to go into Champions League and, and relish the fact that you're putting yourself up against the best teams in Europe. And if you're good enough, you'll get through to the last stages. And Chelsea got through to the last stage, and I thought in the Champions League this year, they were excellent. And, and we all see in the way they push Leon hard. Um, we, we'll probably, our goal is always to be domestically dominant, to be up there, to try and make it the seventh season where come April we're competing for everything. And with Champions League, we'll, we'll embrace the fact that we're playing up against Europe's elite and hope that we can do what we've done in 2016 and 2017 and try and get into those last stages where, you know, you, you're really with the big teams and, and the best team goes on and win. I think it will make the league more competitive. The more teams that come in, um, you see this year with with West Ham coming in, it, it, it's made the league more competitive. Man United coming in and Tottenham, yeah, we, we embrace that as a as a as a club. We we know that our belief is the way that we work and the strategy that we have, and the changes that we make around that strategy. Hopefully, will keep us competitive. And our goal is to be competitive in the league. Um, but we know it's getting it's getting even more difficult. It's getting harder and harder to win. That's why when we do win, we're so proud because maybe we had, we had a luxury in 2016 going undefeated in the league and winning it and winning the Continental Cup. It's so competitive, but it makes the product of the league so much better, and we embrace that. Ah, it's incredible. Like you know. To come to Wembley, to have the opportunity to fight to get to Wembley, is so it's 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 a good thing. And then when you get here, you just got to enjoy it. I I reflected this morning with my assistant on 2017, and I probably didn't enjoy it as much because the occasion almost takes hold of you because you you want to you're here but you want to win. Today I tried to be a little bit more logical and just try and think a little bit more about the game. And uh, up to now, I'm enjoying it. So um, yeah, it's it's a, just a great opportunity. I'm so proud of the players. I, I hope the players will go now and spend so much time with their family and they put so much effort in and commitment and dedication this year to making this team successful again that they deserve everything they get. Thank you very much. Thank you.